Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, we've got a bunch of questions from people, and uh, we'll uh, take them one at a time and start to explore it. So take the first one, which is comes out of our discussion last week, and that is also one of the exercises we did last week, where we feel the leg with the hand, then feel the hand with the leg. And the question is, is it what happens if if the hard to get the hand the feeling of the hand out of the way so that you can actually allow the leg to to dominate or to to get you know center stage to actually feel with the leg and this is a really important question and an important thing to for us to to work on and that's because that we have a certain presets in the, our nervous system, which are the pre-conscious settings that we have accumulated over a lifetime of doing things. And our bodies have picked up habits about how we perceive things. So what we're actually asking to do in this case is to flip it around and take what is pre-conscious that is not yet conscious and make it conscious. And so we, what we're doing in that case is whenever I put my right hand on my right, my right leg, say, uh, my right hand is, it has many more neural connections than my right leg. And this is probably true of most people. Most of us have, have a, a stronger sense because we use our hands a lot more than we do our, our thighs. And so there's there's the neural connections we build up over time have, um, have been much, are much greater in the hand. So there's naturally we're gonna feel, and our brain ordinarily just mushes them together and it just has the feeling and it doesn't really differentiate between the information that is being presented by the sense neurons in the skin on the leg and the sense neurons in the palm of my hand my fingers. So what the exercise is about is to consciously override that pre-conscious impulse to just mush them all together. And the other pre-conscious impulse, which is to just feel with the hand and to say, oh, I'm actually want to establish more connection between my brain and my leg and learn to be able to switch, consciously switch which parts of my sensory neural network I'm activating. When we do this, we're bringing the conscious awareness to the pre-conscious mind. Something which has happened a thousand times that is feeling with a thousand times, a million times in your life, where you're feeling something with your, with your thigh, but you don't even notice, not unless there's pain involved. So, but if you, you just try right now, just put your hand, your right hand on your right leg and bring your awareness to your hand and feel through your hand and feel the leg. And if you're wearing pants, then you feel the pants that uh, are, are there and then You'll also be able to feel through the pants and notice that there's a, a mass on the other side. So just get that feeling in your hand and just take some time with it. Because part of this, of repairing the nervous system, and I, I, I'm going to say that the essential part is curiosity. That if you're just doing this, because Rick said to do that or whatever, then you're probably not gonna get much out of the exercise. But if your hand is feeling into your leg and is actually curious about what's happened there, but also curious without getting into the story, curious about without getting into a story, oh, I'm not really feeling my, feeling my leg, I'm really feeling my pants and my pants, they're, they're made out of cotton and blah, 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 blah. Then you, you, you missed it. Back up. 
and just feel without a story. Now we're gonna reverse that and feel with your leg. So in order to do that, take the hand away and just see if you can sense, let's say your pant leg, your pants with your, with your thigh. See if you can feel your pants. Because here we're, we're asking the leg to do something it doesn't ordinarily do. Even though it's happening on pre-conscious level, but to actually report out loud what it's saying, what it's feeling, it's, it's, that's asking a lot of a leg, but we're doing it. So you feel that. And so just you're establishing that sensing, that sense of feeling with the leg. So it senses that there's something there, even if there's no story and, and better if there is no story. So then now you put your hand on the leg and notice that there's a different feeling there. You take the hand away and there's a different feeling and put the hand back and you take it away. And each time you just feel and you feel and note that there's a difference without getting into the details of the difference. Say, oh, well, there's more heat when my hand's there, blah, blah, blah. Say, there's a sense of heaviness or, or no, no. We want to just feel and take it away. And so that just doing that, just being able to sense with that, consciously overriding your habits, you're bringing parts of your nervous system out of their torpor. They've been asleep and you're waking them up. And anytime you do that, you are generating growth in your nervous system. You're generating new neural connections and possibly even some new neurons. You're and something which 20 years ago, that was impossible, but now it's, it's happening. Now it's, 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 a, it's a scientific fact, even though we always assume that you have a certain amount of neurons and they're gonna die off and then you're dead. But now it's like, no, no, you create new neurons and new neural connections and, and all the way. And, but what does it is curiosity. That is, you're investigating. And what this does, this curiosity, it, by creating these new neural connections, it reverses the the noise that is in there, you know, what we're calling the, um, the um, epigenetic noise, which some scientists are saying is the cause of, of uh, the symptoms of aging is the epigenetic noise. That is epigenetics being the science of how environment affects the gene expression. So we're saying that if you change the environment, both internal and external, that is, you're not surrounding yourself in a, with a hostile environment, you're creating a, a fairly supportive one. And also your internal environment is not hostile. That is, you're not overstressing or you're not ha having negative stress where you're, ah, you're tearing yourself apart by the stress, but you're actually able to create coherence, energetic coherence within the system, then you get that there's, um, you reduce the epigenetic noise by creating more coherence. So we practice this. You can practice this if you've got feet and you feel the floor with your feet and you say, I'm gonna feel the floor with my left foot. And you do that. And then you say, okay, now the right foot. And you do that. And then if you got shoes on, you feel your foot in the shoe, you feel your socks. And when you're doing this, the whole system becomes more lively. You start to regenerate your body mind by creating this supportive epigenesis, the supportive internal environment. 
Okay, uh, any questions on that? Thoughts? Anybody? Keith. You know, that was a really good exercise and what I found, and I'm not sure what the exact term is, but I know you probably know it off the tip of your tongue. I don't know if it's uh, the visual projection, but just trying to imagine that reaching out and trying to feel something and the only thing that you have to feel with is the appendage that you're trying to feel it with, whether it be your thigh or to be your foot. And it's just something that helped me just try to use as an exercise that, you know, I was in my mind tied up and I needed to see what this felt like, but I, all I had was this appendage and it really just kind of helped. So that's just me working my way through it, you know? Thanks, Keith. Peter. Yeah, you know, I, uh, it, this is extremely interesting. It reminds me a while ago, a friend who's an expert in um, healing, body work, exercise, was showing me some exercises for my, uh, my hip joint problems. And she showed me um, liminal movement, you know, sort of if you're just sort of moving up and down, uh, you know, you're not, you're just barely moving or not actually moving. And the rationale was that it's a way of exercising the neuromuscular junction uh, that uh, that will improve, you know, the function of that, you know, of those of the, uh, you know, the well, it'll improve the function of the mind-body, uh, you know, movement by by enriching the um, uh, or healing the neuromuscular junction. It seems like a similar thing. You're kind of you're um, anyway, just a thought. No, that, I, I thank you. That was, that was actually quite quite beautiful because that is what's happening, and that's what's happening in when we're doing Tai Chi Tran very very slowly. Is we're exploring those liminal movements when we take our attention away from "Am I doing it right?" and we're putting it on "What am I feeling?" and really slow it down and actually feel that the tiny movements. Then we can. We can explore and reify those uh, those neural connections at that at the transition point. So I, I love that. That that's that's terrific. We particularly see that in uh, you know when we're place the intention to move but don't move. This is something we do in each ran a lot. It's you know move but don't move. And so the intention is there and you're feeling the, you're feeling everything geared up to do the movement, except you have not given the muscles a, the command to contract. And consequently you get this, this energy buildup that comes from, from being at that liminal point. So that's, that's a great point there, Peter, thank you. <clears throat> 